girl here, Kachina Yoga, and welcome back to Alignment, a free mini course. This course is aimed to bring you tips and tricks that you can use to bring yourself into a state of alignment, physically, mentally, and energetically. So I really hope that you've been enjoying this free course thus far, and if you are enjoying it, please be sure to share with your friends, family, and loved ones via social media, via text, via email, or however you see fit to send forth these videos because we are all at a time where we are ready for alignment. I mean, we are in 2020 and we are going into uh, alignment. That is where we are. So these tips are just my gift to the world um, to share with things that help me with alignment to allow others who may be still struggling or suffering or looking for ways to bring themselves all together into one whole being because that's what alignment is it's being whole okay so think about what I said physically mentally and energetically that's a lot going on that's three levels of alignment at any given time that you are trying to bring together because your avatar remember is not just this physical body you have a physical body you have your mental body and you have your energetic body that those three work together at any given time you can't separate them and um, today we're going to talk about that everything happening in threes because uh, according to yoga and Ayurveda everything actually does happen in threes and these are three primal forces that rule and control this reality that we reside with so if the term guna is uh, foreign to you, then you really are going to want to tune in for a brief understanding of these three primal energies because contrary to popular belief, what you don't know can hurt you. Ignorance is not always bliss. So uh, the three gunas. So like I said, nature consists of these three primal forces and these three primal forces work simultaneously together. Okay. simultaneously together but one force is dominant at any given time now the way nature works is uh, it just kind of is what it is right that saying it is what it is that's just nature that's just how things work but the really cool thing about being in a human avatar is that you have the ability to control which one of these primal forces is active at any given time and these primal forces actually act as like a lens for your reality for the way that you see and react to things so you being in control of what force is dominant within or which force is dominant and active or which force you are feeding is going to help you to shift and align your energy animals don't have this option um, inanimate objects don't have this option trees and um and plants don't have this option but humans have the option to be able to manipulate um these three primal forces and that's basically what magic is so these three primal forces are the three gunas the three gunas and if you um want a sanskrit to english translation of gunas it would be that which binds and that which binds to really make sense because we can't get away from these three primal forces. They are binding us to this reality. So um, these three forces are going to be labeled and entitled Tamas, Rajas, and Sattva. Okay, that's the names of these three culprits that are always in control. And these three guys or gals run together at any given time. Okay, they're always together, but one speaks for all. Okay, but when the one is speaking, the other two are listening and they are getting ready for movement. So they work together simultaneously, always moving, but only one speaks at a time. So let me explain a little bit about the three energies and how they affect you and how at the end, I'll tell you some tips that you can do to, uh, help yourself to see where you are and what you are feeding because what's in control at that given time is basically eating the energy that uh, and, and thriving from the energy that we are feeding it okay 
So let's talk about um, our first culprit, Thomas. Okay, so Thomas is uh, going to be the energy of, mm, I guess you could say, destruction, kind of similar to. It is, um, Thomas is the power of darkness. Thomas is the power of stillness. Thomas is the power of inertia, okay? So the time when you go to sleep, the time when you meditate, those are Thomasic states. So even though Thomas is considered to be a negative force, you, we're going to have to get past thinking of negative and positive as good and bad because all three of these are needed and remember always at play at any given time. So it is a negative force and eating Tomasic foods keep you in a negative um, energetic placement okay so how your energy is actually flowing at any at any given time however there may be times when you need a change so you can't really just uh, throw the baby with the out with the bath water so tomasic foods would be things that are um, fast food uh, things that are spoiled food um highly processed food uh fake food i mean for lack of a better word <laughs> it's fake food you know anything that's on the verge of being spoiled that's going to be a tomistic uh, food so anything that is gmo you know that those are all Domestic type of foods and if you think about what those do you know you can think about that episode on the boondocks when they got the itis after they ate the fried burger with the bacon and the cheese and the um and all the dressings and then it was sitting between two fried donuts i mean you know that that puts you to sleep or after thanksgiving when you you eat so many carbs and all this uh what they call comfort foods that put you to sleep and you just passed out those are tomistic type foods normally so um but you know like i said everything has its place so when you're in a state of tomistic energy you have a uh the chance of going into a state of depression because depression is a tomistic state but depression is actually a needed state because if everything were always happy then you would never have change, right? I mean, it's not that you stay in the state of depression, but when we look outside of, of depression as it being so in control of us and us not being in control of it, because remember, in the human avatar, you have the opportunity to pick which guna is dominant by feeding it. You're not in the animal stage once you elevated and raised your level of consciousness so that your perspective perception is wide enough and your perspective is wide enough that you can actually begin to do these things and manipulate energy so um in the tomasic state you, like i said states of depression or it may seem like uh there's so much falling apart in your life and at that time you know a lot you have to think about things have to fall apart in order to um be rebuilt or to become anew. So a lot of times we are so attached to things and remember guna means that which binds. So we are so attached to them that when they begin to be moved from us or, or separated from us, we can feel like the world is falling apart instead of seeing what's coming on the other end or the, the bright side of things or the other end of the tunnel or however you may refer to it. So the Thomistic state is a very earthy state, is a very heavy state. Um, it is recognized as the earth element, okay? So then we have the Rajisic state, which is our intermediate. He's our neutral energy, or she's our neutral energy, however you may look at it. And um, in the Rajisic state is a state of passion, it is a state of uh, the sensuality. It is a state of action. 
The registic state is a state of aggression and anger, and um, it is it's a very turbulent and powerful energy for change. So you can think about uh, Raja or registic state as a fiery type of state or the sun. So you had the the um, Tamasic was your earth. Okay, so that's the think about earth hard stopping power. Think about mountains, think about rocks, think about stone, think about cliffs and hard stopping power. Think about like Shiva, Kali. So when you get into the registic state, you're thinking about the sun, you're thinking about the fire, you're thinking about um, uh, passion, sexuality, you're thinking about anger, you're thinking about aggression, you're thinking about change, and you're thinking about fire. Okay, the registic state is needed in order to hold the tamasic state and the sapic state, which we're going to get to next, together. So you can think about the, the tamasic state being earth, and then the sapic state being heaven. It's a state of heaven, it's a sapic state of being. So what's holding heaven and earth together is the sun. And that is you, because you are a being of the sun, or a being with a soul, which is a sun, soul being sun, okay? So the, the you have these two sides that are going, and this one right here is holding everything together. So registic state is a state of change, and you are in a realm of change. Nothing is still. Everything is always moving everything constantly including the mind so when you think about the mind the mind is very unstable it's not um, something that's on a solid it, it, that may sound odd saying that the mind is unstable and you may feel like my mind is not unstable I'm not a sta unstable being but you are your mind has to be unstable because there's it's moving in many directions at one time if it was only looking one way, how could you figure out complex uh, complex problems? How could you multitask? How could you do anything like all the systems of your body moving? Like how could you breathe and walk and talk and swallow and do all of these things at the same time if your mind was not constantly unstable? So the mind is unstable and it is influenced by these uh, gunas. Everything is influenced by these gunas. Nothing in this reality remains uninfluenced by these three primal forces. So when something is in a registic state, it's usually in a state of change. You may not, however, know that it's in a registic state because you may not even know that these three primal forces are all going at one time. So you don't realize what you're feeding when you're feeding into a registic state. Registic states are needed because they take us from the tamasic state to the sattvic state. So if you need to move from earth to heaven, you need a little raja in your life, okay? You need a little raja, a little fire, okay, in your life to move you. So it's going to be something that's going to be considered as friction. So anytime the registic energy is being fed, it is causing friction that's going to cause, that's cause, supposed to cause you from moving from one state to the other, whichever way it is that you're going. Because it can go backwards, it can go forward, whichever, that's kind of um, relevant to whatever the situation is, what's backwards and what's forward. Because remember, negative and positive are not necessarily good or bad. They just are. So you have this resistance state going on, and so it brings change into your life. It brings friction into your life. And that's great for getting out of a state of depression and into a state of sattvic, which is joy and bliss and heaven and peace and harmony, you know, like, or, or nirvana. Those are the states that you want to be in so that the body can release all those beautiful um, chemicals that it releases when it's in a state of bliss and it just feels good and that nectar comes out and it just, you were just... Ooh, like on the, the walls of the temples in Egypt, you just high, you know? That's the whole thing, is to get those chemicals to release and to be able to experience true bliss. So you have to go through change in order to get there, and that's what Raja is for. Raja shows up and 
Roger's that one that always is ready to start some stuff off. You know, hey, let's get this started. I'm, I'm down for anything. Roger is down for anything. Because Roger is always moving. Because remember, these three can't be separated. They always roll together. And that's why in Hindu mythology, you see um, the three goddesses and you see the three gods. And they always roll together. They have to. Because they can't exist without the other. But Raja would be considered in Hindu mythology to be the Lakshmi and the Vishnu energy, okay? So um, anytime you want to introduce the Rajasic energy into your life, you could utilize foods that are spicy because Rajasic foods are going to be spicy foods, all meat uh, that is unprocessed, um, most meat, I'll say it like that. <coughs> most meat and eggs are Rajasic foods. Um, spicy foods are rajistic, fried foods are rajistic, foods that are made um, by somebody who is pissed off, that their energy affects what they're creating. So with tamisic food as well, so if you're eating something from somebody who is a very depressed being or somebody who hates their job or something like that, those are things to consider because they are the ones creating what you are ingesting. Because remember, we're feeding the guna. So you can have a, a meal that appears to be rajistic or sattvic, but it's prepared by hands and energy that um, is not happy. And guess what? That's what you're going to get at the end of the day. So always consider the, the uh, actual person that's bringing in the energy, the cook. Yeah. Always consider the cook. But um, so yeah, so the the rajistic energy, like I said, is a, is a neutral state. It's always there. It's not really trying to kick things. It's not really choosing sides because it, it just as well as it can take you to the sidewalk side, it can take you down to the Thomistic side. It's not, it's neutral, okay? It's neutral. And it is the state of being awake. I'm sorry, wow. Well, um, it, it's, it's, uh, it's just being, and it just is. It's, it's like, like I said, it's Lakshmi, it's Vishnu, it's sustenance, it's, it's um, the sustainer. So that's what Raja is. And you need Raja at all given times. But sometimes when you increase it, you can push yourself into the next stage that you're wanting to be in. For lack of a better word, y'all know what I mean. Um, when the mind is in a rajistic state, it is going to be, like I said, very passionate. It's going to, um, it can feel frustrated at times. It's trying to figure things out. It's trying to change things. And that state is, um, if you're always in a rajistic state, that can cause anxiety. So whereas the, the tamistic state can cause depression, even though Raja is a neutral energy, always being on, always being active, because remember it's a state of being awake, can cause you to be anxious. And so that, that's how that affects the mind and that's how you see things when you are looking through rajistic um, lenses, because remember one of the gunas, it's kind of like that kaleidoscope, you change it, and now I'm looking through Raja, and I'm going through uh, Thomas, or like the, when you get your eyes checked, how does it look when you look through Sattva? How does it look when you look through Raja? How does it look when you look through Thomas? So each one of these states are, are going to affect what you see and how you feel and how you react. So if you're looking through a state of depression and I'm just unattached and I don't care about anything, oh God, life is so bad, then that's how life is going to be approached to you. And it could be the most amazing opportunity coming to you but you'll have the mindset oh that would never work or that can't be real that's probably fake somebody trying to fool me um why would they pick me i could never do that and that's what you're gonna do so you want to introduce a regional extreme rajistic uh diet and lifestyle like exercise is a very rajistic activity whereas sleeping and sitting on the couch and just sitting around watching movies and stuff like that's a very optimistic type of activity and just you know hanging out not doing anything not getting out being active and stuff that's going to be resistant so you would want to introduce more to get out of a state of depression you would start getting out you would start going to talk to people you would start doing things you would get up out the bed if you were getting out of a state that's raja hey let's go to the party if you think about lakshmi lakshmi always want to party so there you go now 
their big friend, their big brother, the big sister, the one who is always happy, always in a state of bliss, nothing, um, doesn't want anything to take them out of that state, is going to be Sattva. And that energy is, like I said, considered the heaven or the moon or the light energy. So when you think about um, the moon, you think about um, higher levels of consciousness or, or you think about um, light, how the moonlight comes on the water. It looks completely different than the sun and it doesn't scorch you and burn you like the sun is like ah, just always on and the moon is kind of like laid back and chill and thoughtful and and um, blissed out right the moon just kind of like hey hanging back hey yeah that's sattva okay that's the blissful state that's nirvana so um that's what people attempt to get when they uh, are doing certain drugs they're trying to get to that state of of bliss that's where sex takes you when you have an orgasm it takes you to this state of that's why people chase that feeling that's why people chase the feeling through drugs but you can naturally get into that state by raising your vibrations by um, controlling the dominant guna that is in your life because you can do it through foods again you can introduce uh, sattvic foods this is why the vegans tend to be so woo -woo -woo when they um, are living a uh, sattvic diet and then also because just the diet alone is not going to do it so don't all vegans are not like that but um, when they're living a sattvic diet uh, lifestyle uh, lifestyle by also you know raising their levels of consciousness and um, uh, uh, doing things that are benefiting themselves and others and actually being more enlightened are enlightening themselves by um, studying more and working within and doing their shadow work and doing movement through yoga and exercise and starting to hone their um, personal and gifts and talents and abilities that they have that are unique to them and actually trusting in their intuition and actually raising their uh, consciousness and their perspective those beings tend to be what they consider to be like you know um, holy beings or enlightened ones and they're usually just you know really chill and laid back and at peace and at ease and that is what is the um, desired state it doesn't mean that you are um, never doing anything because you are this sense of purity but at the same time it does mean a sense of purity not purity from oh other all of these things are just so bad but purity from i only want to do things that that make me feel like this so sex may go from wanting to have sex with everyone and everything to wanting to have sex with individuals who make who vibrate on a level with you and make you feel a certain way and can take you to different realms and different levels of consciousness so you go from an animal mentality remember the animals don't get to choose the dominant guna to the actual uh, creator and decider and sovereign one who is in, tr in charge of their own energy because it's within each and every one place thing being item everything in this reality whether it's a pen a flower a tree a television a lamp a person a dog all of us everything is controlled by these three gunas but you have the ability to um, be in control of the energy that is within not without you cannot control the energy without but you can control what is within you and that is your um that is your birthright so sattvic um, feelings of bliss and of heaven and of joy and of happiness and of purity um, are what the hap or the sta is the state where all of the wonderful chemicals that we like for the body to feel and enjoy are released in the body versus the stress producing hormones that are released when you are in a constant Tomistic and rigid constant resistic state so you need to be able to get into those sattvic states so you need to be working on self and discovering self and honoring self and loving self and really getting deeper into who self really is because like I said we're talking about these three 
primal forces, but these three primal forces have been interacting and they create splits of different forces that are within that you still need to understand and to realize. So um, when we're getting into the Sotwick state, you can think about Sotwick as um, like the uh, airy, ethery type of energy. So when you think of air and ether, you can think about creativity, you can think about um, art, 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 you can think about music, you can think about um, um, meditation and mentalism and using the mind, you can think about being connected with the higher self, you can think about being connected with the inner child, which is purity again, or in innocence, you can think about angels, you can think about higher levels of consciousness and enlightened beings and connecting with spirit in general um, when you are in a sattvic state because your body is not stressed, those chemicals are not being released, you're not in a constant state of agitation, you are actually able to receive when you are in a sattvic state. So that's why when you just um, do better and know, then you know better and when you know better you want better and you don't settle for less you only take better when you know what happens to your avatar when it's in alignment. So, sattvic foods are going to be foods that typically don't <clears throat> excuse me, typically don't last long in your body. They digest very quickly. You can think about things like fruits and vegetables and grains and things like that. So, like I said, like a vegan lifestyle, but Again, vegan sattvic foods would be non-GMO, so this is not going to be your um, artificial burgers and artificial chicken and stuff like that and artificial cheese. Those are not sattvic foods. Those are probably just tamisic foods that are looking like the logistic foods that you uh, gave up. So that's not going to change anything. But and like I said, each food has its own energy. Each person has its own energy that is dominant. Each um, place, location has its own dominant guna. Each uh, thing that you touch, each conversation that you have, each thought that you have, each movie that you watch, each song that you listen to, everything has a dominant guna. And it's all about what you continue to feed into your energy and how, with how that you, things will change for you. So what I suggest is for you to, um, did I let you list all the sidewalk foods? I said uh, fruits, vegetables, grains. Yeah, I did. I just talked about some things. So what I suggest for you is to, at any given time and in any given, any given situation, to ask yourself, what buddy do you have riding shotgun with you? So is it the Tamisic buddy? Is it the Rajistic buddy or is it the Sotwick buddy? Who are you entertaining? What conversation are you having? How is it changing your emotions? How is it changing your mind? Is it a Sotwick conversation that's meant to enlighten you, to bring you to higher levels? Is it a Tamisic conversation that's bringing you down and now you need to adjust your mindset and your, your protections within yourself? so that you don't go down with that level because you can't avoid those conversations but you should you can control how you respond to them because it's very easy to get into that space especially if you're an empathetic being so um, always ask yourself what energy who do I have riding shotgun or is it Raja is it, you know who is it and when you think about the sattvic energy you can think about um, Saraswati and Brahma you can think about those uh, two beings in the Hindu mythology, and when you think about them, they are in, what over writing, over intelligence, over um, art, over mantra, over all of those things. When you when you really get deeper into the mythology, you can really get deeper into these gunas as well. If you are interested in um, learning more about the gunas, I do cover uh, the gunas in my book, Kali's Corner Earth Body 101: Awakening the Human Avatar can be found on Amazon and the Gunas uh, I cover in the solar plexus course on teachable.com you can um, find that on the website kachiniyoga.com information about that but 
I recommend that if you do anything um, in this course, the main focus would be to actually understand the energy of the Guna because like I said, it's a primal force. These are primal forces and you cannot get away from them, but you do have the power to decide which one is dominant. Who are you going to allow to continue to ride shotgun? Sometimes you need Thomas, sometimes you need Raja, and sometimes you need Satwe. It just depends on who you need at the given time and who it is that you choose to feed because guess what? They're going to eat. So at the end of the day, it's all up to you because there's only one you, so you have no choice but to shine. The divine in me bows in gratitude to the divine in each and every one of you. Namaste. Thank you.